This call is now being recorded. Good afternoon, everyone. And it is our pleasure to have with us Dr. Ravinder Kumar with us. Sir is head department of LPM, College of Veterinary Science and Animal Husbandry, Ranchi, Jharkhand. Yes, and the topic chosen for deliberation is integrated pig farming techniques for doubling farmer's income and livestock based suitable integrated farming system for doubling farmer's income. So, sir, you are audible as well as visible. Uh, please start. Okay, thank you. So good afternoon, everyone, participants, dear participants. This is the second day of uh, our program. And uh, myself, Dr. Ravindra Kumar, also course director of this program. I think you are feeling comfortable with our program. And uh, all the topics of this program is very informative. And uh, I hope you enjoy all. So, Today, my topic is integrated pig farming technique for doubling farmer's income. This is the just you see in this photographs how pigs are consuming the by products of agricultural by product. Just you see, even uh, a small, very small farmers, landless farmers having two pigs, and they are providing the by products of agriculture. What they are not able to, the things not unable to sell to the markets things unable to sold for the consumption of the human beings so pigs are ready for consumption so here just to see how the growth is and uh, just you imagine the cost of two pig is approx 40000 so my intervention is how for a small farmers, how this pig or other livestock is beneficial? Because most of the farmers, they are engaged in the agriculture. They are doing the agriculture. But the agriculture alone can't fulfill the requirements of the farmers. Our farmers, there are so many requirements, the fooding, the housing, the other expenditure, so many things are there. But I think because of the most of the farmers are small farmers, most of the farmers are landless farmers and uh, their agricultural produce is also not enough to fulfill the all the requirements. So my topic, the concern of my topic is how can we integrate the livestock, especially in this today we will discuss more about the pig, how can we integrate the pig with the farmers what they are doing so that we can double the in farmers income so let let me start so integrated farming system you all know that it is the integration of two or more enterprise for each form according to the ability of resources to sustain and satisfy as many necessities of the owner as it is possible which leads to increased productivity per unit area efficient recycling of farm waste, better utilization of resources, generate employment, reduce risk and ensure sustainability. We have to, we are also, we have to talk about the sustainability and we have to reduce the risk. So many risks are there, even in agriculture, so many risks are there. Especially in some areas where most of the agriculture are under rainfall condition, huge risks are there. And in that risk condition, if the Lighter stocks are there, they are considered as mortgage victor. Risk will be minimized by the lighter stock farming by the farmers. And the integration is to be made in such a way that byproduct of one component should be the output for the other enterprise with high degree of complementary effects on each other. So this is about the integrated farming system. now. About the resources of livestock in India, as we know, just this is the introductory points, few points just to introduce yourself. Uh, India is having huge, huge diversified livestock resources, enriching the life of millions of peoples of rural India. And livestock resources are key component in sustainable agriculture. They are attached. Livestocks are attached. Just we have to some modify, we have to uh, we'll show the some models so that uh, that models uh, 
will be more beneficial for the farmers and we know there is huge population of uh, this livestock in india then in buffaloes this is first rank in india cattle second rank in india goat uh, this is the third rank in india so huge livestock populations are there with the farmers and most of the livestock also it is the fact that more, most of the livestock is with the in the hand of the small or landless farmers so livestock provides livelihood to two third of rural community and generate employment to 8.8 percent of population in india and livestock sector contributes 4.11 percent of the gdp and 25.6 percent of total agricultural gdp this is the point to be noted and this is the out of the total agricultural produce 20 uh, gdp 25 percent is alone by the livestock so you just imagine how livestock is important for the farmers and livestock is also associated with the farmers in many ways traditionally and also culturally also this is associated with the farmers and india is of course number one milk producer egg producer it is third in rank in egg production in india and livestock contributes contributes to the production of valuable manure leather pelts etc and livestock based ifs is a traditional practice this is not a new thing just we have to modify we have to just uh, uh, we may call this uh, uh, re uh, genesis re genesis of these things this is the very old practice traditionally traditionally farmers rear livestock along with the our agriculture so this is not a new things but diversification of crop based agriculture with dairy goatry fishery poultry duckery etc is necessary for increasing the income of farmers here again we are talking about the income of farmers our ulti goal, ultimate goal is to increase the farmers income double the farmers income by introducing the suitable component here we will talk about the suitable livestock component for a particular farmers we, we we will not forcefully introduce the livestock for that for a, any particular farmers but the but the uh, livestock is suitable for according to their agroclimatic condition, according to their choice, according to their agricultural produce. With these all things we have to keep in mind before introduction of livestock as an integrated livestock farming for the farmers. And livestock holding is more equally distributed among farmers computed, computed, com compared to the land holding. If the land holding is more, then livestock will be more. If land land holding is less, then livestock. So it is equally distributed. The major emphasis in farming system is the productive recycling of farm waste. Our ultimate goal is, our ultimate goal of IFS is, there must not be any wastage, whether it is the wastage of livestock, whether it is the wastage of the agricultural produce. No any wastage is recommended no any wastage, wastage is required and we have to utilize the waste in such a manner that we can Im improve the economic status of the farmers this is our main game so we will talk today about the livestock waste integrate integrated farming now most in most of the places mainly basis is the agriculture land and few one or two livestocks are there along with the uh, this is the crop products but we are thinking that the livestock is because the land holding of the uh, the farmers is decreasing day by day and with the limited land with the very small areas of the land they are unable to fulfill their requirements so we have to introduce the livestock with the farmers and we have to increase the income of the farmers so livestock as we know even in a small areas even in a uh, uh, uncultivated areas if the uh, some areas where cultivation is not being happened here some problems are there in that areas also we can grow the livestock and we can increase the income of the farmers so livestock based integrated farming system is one of the raising agriculture system for the northeastern region also of course and the practice of this type of farming system has been continued in this region in a traditional way 
from time to time immemorial and the basic principle of this farming system is the productive recycling of the farmers this is the basic system and different subsystem work together in integrated farming system resulting in greater total productivity than the sum of the individual production and if we talk about the pig if we talk about the poultry because pig poultry this is the most of the uh, farmers they are rearing especially if we talk about the uh, uh, tribal farmers, if we talk about the rural farmers, if we talk about the backward farmers, then they have the poultry, they have the pig, they have the goat and few farmers, they are also they uh, having the cattle and bullocks also. So, fish along with livestock, because fish is, why are we talking about the fish? Because the fish is water reservoir is essential for the fish production and water reservoir is also essential for the crop production. So, if we have the water reservoir, then we may utilize this water reservoir for fish production. We may use this water reservoir for livestock drinking water. We may utilize this water reservoir for the agriculture crop. In most of the cases, just to imagine here, in also in the, I am talking about the Jharkhand. In Jharkhand, most of the uh, farmers in the rural areas, they are having the fish, they are having the pond, and they are having the agriculture. This is the integration. And the wastage of the pig comes to the pond, and that pond, the water, they are very highly having the organic materials, and they pump that water for the irrigation in the agriculture field. And you may imagine, you, you will imagine that uh, no any fertilizer is required for growing the crops to the farm. So fertilizer saving is also very important in the, uh, it will count as the earning because fertilizer cost become negligible if we integrate the livestock with the uh, livestock fish and the crop production. So an integrated crop livestock farming system represents a key solution for enhancing livestock production and safeguarding the environment through the prudent and efficient resource use. And the increasing pressure on land and growing demand of livestock product makes it more and more important to ensure the effective use of feed resources, including crop resources. So feed resources is also very, very, very important because the feed is very, very important uh, uh, factor for the livestock production. and. Uh, Livestock, there are so many livestock, we already we are talking, this is poultry, is the another, another words is there. And uh, pig is a monogastric animal, uh, and ruminants in uh, the cattle, the buffaloes, the uh, sheep, goat. So, these are the uh, things, these are the livestocks, they are associated with the farmers. So, integration if we are doing the integration so we are considering the uh, economic status we are con considering the uh, the produce of the farmer so that we can utilize the in product of one component to the utilize for the utilization of the other components we may integrate the crop with the cattle with the pig whatever it is and uh, we have to think of which type of component we, is suitable for a particular farmer for a particular agroclimatic conditions. So this IFS, this is uh, this provides suitability, sustainability, productivity, profitability. If we introduce the suitable IFS for a particular farmer, this is, it, is, it will be sustainable, production will be more and of course, in the last, the our ultimate goal, goal is the profitability, profit will be more. So, goal of our IFS is a steady and a stable income. If we integrate livestock with the crops, then regular income will come. Suppose the cattle and the crop production. Crop production, in the crop, we will get the income after four to six months. But if we are having a cow along with the crop production, then we will get the daily income from the selling of milk. If we have the, <clears throat> if we have the poultry, 
we are getting the daily x and we can sell daily x and we can get the income if we are having the ducks we can sell the duck eggs we can sell the duck for meats and we can means steady and stable income will come if the livestock are there agro ecological equilibrium this is also another important aspect equilibrium equilibrium is important ecological equilibrium means this is the now the uh, you uh, might have seen that uh, the uh, production performance suppose the uh, this uh, soil fertility is decreasing day by day we are utilizing so many fertilizers pesticides so that the productivity uh, performance of the soil is decreasing so with the use of livestock we can maintain this equilibrium avoid build up of biological stress with whatever the biological stress is there we can avoid reducing the use of chemicals if we use these the by products of the livestock to the field of course we can reduce the use of chemicals and we know there are so many side effects of the using the chemicals by the produce of the agriculture whatever we are get, getting the maize wheat there uh, the uh, nutritional value is decreasing in the wheat in the uh, rice in the other fruits and pesticides residues are there that uh, that are uh, very harmful uh, for our body so we can minimize these all things just by integrating and advantages if we talk about the advantages that is so many advantages food and nutritional security recycling of residues minimum pollution hazard so we just we talk about minimum pollution hazard improve microclimate and minimize risk of failure so these are the advantages so if we talk about the ifs for different type different agroclimatic condition for different types of farmers for different types of lands lowland upland uh, uh, just uh, uh, this uh, uh, water uh, having the water reservoir so, so many lands are there with the farmers so we may recommend suitable models for the farmers so different models are crop with livestock crop with livestock and fisheries crop with livestock poultry and fisheries crop with fishery and duckery crop with livestock and agroforestry agri silvi pastoral agri silvi apiary and many more so many things are there this is so there are so many choices with the farmers what they can do what they want to do and our ultimate goal is to increase the income of the farmers by introducing the suitable models ifs model and and in this model livestock will be the main component so if we talk about the current status of the farming system uh, we know indian economy is mainly agricultural oriented and a small and marginal farmers are the core of the indian rural economy it is contributing 85% of total farming community but possessing only 44% of the total operational land and the average size of operational land holding has reduced by reduced from 2.28 hectare in 1970 to 71 to 1.16 so just half the operational land holding is reduced to half so you just imagine in letter it is the data of 10 11 i think it is all also it is, it uh, might have reduced more so the operational land holding is india is still declining if we talk about the bihar and kerala this is the example the average size of land holding fell by more than three times during the last four decades whereas in andhra Karnataka, MP, Maharashtra, it has reduced by more than two times due to immense population pressure on the limited land resources available for the cultivation. And the declining trend per capita land ability poses a serious challenge to the sustainability and profitability of the farming community. Land is declining, requirement is increasing. Farmers require more money, but uh, they are having the less land. So, 
livestock is the solution we have to introduce the livestock as a central component so we need ifs why of course india's population is increasing and by 2030 we reduce so many produce demand will be more and more of the livestock by products livestock product livestock produce by 2030 we have to have the more milk 130 to 150 million ton milk vegetables fruits meats its a demand is increasing as the population is increasing and to fulfill this demand we have to go with the ifs increase total productivity we have to also increase the total productivity per unit area in a specified time total productivity per unit area we have to also think that by the per unit area how can we increase the total productivity and the traditional cropping pattern is the risk and uncertainty traditionally what they are doing and ifs approach what we are talking ifs it in, it will enhance the productivity reduce the environment degradation and maintain the economic sustainability so this approach is the demand of the present time demand of the present time for the farmers for increasing the farmer system ifs approach so sub systems of ifs are aquaculture agroforestry livestock crops so these are the sub systems in livestock there are so many species are there and in agroforestry in aquaculture in crop we can integrate the different species with different types of different sub system different components of the livestock and as well as the agriculture aquaculture crops etc so yeah, these are the components just you see in the how they are uh, uh, cycling is there and uh, the component of ifs are crop poultry quail turkey pigeon pigeon farming is also in a tradition now so the they are doing the commercial pigeon duck dairy rabbit pisciculture mushroom sericulture pig apiculture biogas so so many components means so many choices are there for the farmers to increase the income and they can uh, they can uh, have the models they can have what are they doing just we have to uh, channelize it just we have to think uh, in a scientific way and we have to have a model so that in a scientific way if we are doing this ifs with the livestock as a main component then of course the uh, income of the farmers will increase so now we are talking about the uh, we'll talk about the pig pig because the today topic is based on the pig farming and uh, we have to integrate the pig with the different components so pig is the very important livestock species we may call the pig as a biological machine pig is also called as a atm so many names are there uh, of the pig because of the their very high productive performance very high growth performance very good feed uh, conversion efficiency so so many characteristics so many uh, features are there so many positive points are there so that pig is become very very popular previously we are talking about the pig previously it is only concentrated with the uh, limited with the tribal farmers only limited with the uh, north eastern asia but now the pig is spreading pig is spreading pig in punjab in haryana in up in bihar in kerala in maharashtra in tamil nadu everywhere everywhere farmers is adopting the pigri for their uh, increasing the uh, this uh, uh, income and they are integrating this pigri with the crop integrating this pigri with the aquaculture and they are increasing their income and their economic status is increasing there are so many examples there are so many success stories are there that the farmers are doing the pigri and they are gaining the their economic status so a little bit introduction about the pigri pig population in the country is 9.06 million and 79% of pig is still indigenous it is considered 
and in india 70% peak population is reared under traditional a small holder low input demand driven production system so this these are the constraints and improved pig husbandry program and pig based integrated pig farming system has significantly contributed in poverty alleviation strategies of the government now the government is uh, uh, considered now government is uh, uh, thinking that pig can improve the economic status of the farmer so so many uh, this uh, programs are there for the uh, uh, village area for the different states so many programs on based on the pigs are there and they are distributing the pigs to the farmers and the main advantage of the pigry is the in pig they are very resistant to the disease and uh, in pigry the as compared to the other livestock the disease occurrence is very very less only a few diseases we will discuss later only a few diseases are there and uh, uh, if we vaccinate against this disease then there is no risk is there with the piggy so this is the safe this is the safe in the livestock this is the safe so population in pig is increased with 32.69% so this is just to see the growth in jharkhand meghalaya assam chatisgarh mizoram their growth is more than 20% even 33% in jharkhand maximum growth of piggy in india during the uh, this last 5 years so it is 32.69% next meghalaya and then assam 28.3% so this much growth is being seen during the last census during the last 5 years so you can imagine how the growth they are doing and most of the farmers they want to rear the pigs because because of uh, they are faster growth they are uh, just you see uh, this uh, jharsu pig jharsu we will discuss the jharsu pig what is that jharsu pig it is the it is a variety which is being developed in our birsa agriculture university ranchi jharkhand so this jharsu pig just you just you see in the this, this is the photographs of the village area of the jharkhand the farmers are having two or three pigs and they are doing the agriculture also and what the agricultural by products are coming they are utilized there is pig for feeding uh, to the pigs and they are talking they are telling what they uh, earn the income from the crop the similar income are coming from by keeping two or three pigs why the small uh, crop area they are supposed uh, this uh, getting the income of 30 or 40000 just by keeping two to three pigs they are getting the same income so if a farmers a small farmers or a marginal farmers if they rear two to three pigs then their income of course it will be double and nothing to do just what the produce what the agricultural by products are there what the vessels uh, are there we can utilize and we can also utilize their manual for the fertilizer in the field if we utilize this manure in the field then the this the utilization of this pesticides and this uh, fertilizer will be the less so this is again this is the just you see the uh, farmers they are uh, utilizing this agricultural produce agriculture by products like uh, paddy like the grasses like the best of vegetables so many things are there they are uh, used for the uh, feeding to their pigs so if we talk about the pig uh, breed because the uh, in case of the livestock breed is the very important and uh, in breed breed is also recommended on the basis of agroclimatic agroclimatic conditions of the areas uh, we may not recommend all the breeds for all the areas so these are the some recommended breeds of pig for different uh, states of India, suppose in northeastern states, the land race and large white tail oxar is recommended, and their crosses also. Northeastern India, large white tail oxar, triple cross with Duroc and large black. In eastern India, Hampshire cross and our Jharsuk, Tambur cross. Jharsuk is the Tambur and Desi cross, and this is a very popular uh, uh, pig variety 
uh, and it is distributed all over the India. In Central India, land race, large white yurts are in Southern India, large white yurts are in Western India, large white yurts are. So there are, these are the breeds recommended for, these are the photographs, just a minute, just, hello sir. <laughs> sir. So just you see these are the photographs of the different breeds of the pigs and uh, just to see the timber here, Hampshire, Yorkshire, Russian. So, so these are the breeds that is the exotic breeds are there and so many cross breeds are coming in different states where they are doing the research on pig, there are so many crossbreds uh, have released that are beneficial for the farmers in the uh, field area. You just see in the photographs, just to see, they, uh, they are having the pigs and in uh, uh, just uh, 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 in grazing areas, in pasture land, they are rearing the pigs. And just to see, imagine this, uh, how much uh, piglets are there and cost of each piglets is 3000 to 4000. So there are so many, they are highly producive, highly productive and uh, average litter size is seven and in one year uh, 14 piglets, the farmers are getting minimum 14 piglets and cost of 14 piglets is approx 50,000. So if, if a farmer is having two strong, two females and they produce piglets, then net income will 60 to 70 thousand uh, will come so this much amount of the, um, the uh, income uh, the farmers are getting and uh, in different integrated way if we are talking about the ifs integrated farming system and pig waste integrated farming system how can we uh, keep the pig as a central component and how can uh, 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 we integrate this pig with the other farming system. So, first is the free range or a scavenging system. This is suitable for the farmers residing in the village area, in the forest area, in suppose in the uh, uh, northern eastern region, in the uh, our Jharkhand, in other states where the so many grazing lands is there, forest area is there. So this system is very, very suitable because we will discuss later that the major cost of pig farming comes under the feeding. Major cost of pig farming comes under the feeding. So, and pig is the monogastic animal and uh, since it is a monogastic animal, so we have to provide it the grains, the concentrate mixture and that is the very costly. So, if we integrate this pig with the silvi pasture, if we integrate with this pig with the horticulture, if we integrate with the uh, uh, this the uh, forest production, then of course it will be very very beneficial. So free range system is a also a traditional system, and mainly indigenous pigs. Previously farmers were keeping the indigenous pig, but if the farmers having two or three pigs, a small in number, they can uh, rear under this system. And productivity is generally low and the potential is limited, significant contribution to livelihood of poor people. But even the production potential is less uh, under this system, what significantly it contributes to the livelihood of the farmers. Because they consume whatever available in the area, they can consume and they utilize effectively for the production of the meat and the production of the piglets and ultimately they uh, provide a good quantity of good income to the farmer. Second system is the semi-intensive system. Semi-intensive system uh, is popular in the semi-urban areas of course and uh, most of the farmers now they want to rear uh, in the, the cross grade, the pure grade and uh, here the productivity is high. Here also this is the also uh, this system is suitable for the rural areas also because they have prepared the seeds, but uh, to reduce the cost of feed time to time, three to four hours, they allow the feed to go outside and for consumption of the grasses, for consumption of the forest by product, for the consumption of the uh, 
uh, wastage of the agriculture wastage whatever it is so this is the also very popular system and the farmers if they are having the pigs in a larger quantity suppose 10 20 30 so they can rear under this system this is suitable and this is the just to see the intensive system intensive system means complete they keep the pigs complete in an enclosure especially in the semi urban areas and urban areas if they want to rear the piggery then in this system is suitable and under this system we also integrate this intensive system of farmers with the crop production also just what the produce agricultural by byproducts horticulture by byproducts what the by product is available we can bring that by product and keep keep to the pigs for the feeding then by this way we also we can reduce the production cost of pigs so this under the this intensive system of farmers they, the, means uh, if the farmers want to do in an organized way they can rear this pig in under the intensive system of the pharmacy in suppose in uh, in uh, so many uh, few success stories are there where the the farmers uh, were rearing uh, the vegetables especially in jharkhand also so, so many farmers are engaged in vegetable production sometimes the cost of the vegetables suppose the redis suppose the uh, this uh, cauliflower the tomatoes sometimes it uh, the cost become very very less 1 rupees 0.5 as 0.5 rupees uh, per kg in that situation farmers become hopeless so in that situation they are sometimes previously they were selling they were thrown out that uh, the produce like radish and uh, these other things that just thrown out or they keep it as such in the field condition so now that farmers they if the vegetables if they are unable to sell to the market then they utilize they uh, they utilize it for the feeding to the pigs so there is no wastage and farmers will also uh, become happy so that their their produce is being utilized for the uh, in pig uh, for pig feeding and ultimate, ultimately the pig growth has become higher and they sold that pigs and they this is the uh, there is no uncertainty and uh, why the selling of the pig why the selling of the piglets they are getting the good amount of income so if we talk about the importance such you just to see in the photographs how the piglets are there, there are 17 piglets are there this is the jharsu pig and the number of piglets is 17 just imagine and all becomes uh, uh, all weaned uh, after two months of age and the they share, sold that pig at the rate of 3000 each means just one time farrowing farmers get the income of 50,000. So this is the productive performance and a pig has great potential to contribute. This is the importance, faster economic returns of the farmers, better feed conversion efficiency. Feed conversion efficiency means what they are getting and what their output. So next to the poultry, feed conversion efficiency is very good for the pig. And uh, early maturity, shorter generation interval, disease resistance, low startup cost, and a small investment. Potential to ensure nutritional and economic security. Easily integrated with series of other farming activity. Very easily they can integrate because they can consume all the Y products, not suitable for consumption of the human beings. They can consume it easily and they convert in the for the meat production so just this is the just to see the example of our farmer here in the this is the example of the ranchi charkhand the one farmer is uh, how they integrated this pig this uh, uh, yeah, epic uh, sorry yeah, fisheries and duckries and they are getting the income from all the sites. They are getting the income from all the sites. So, why selling the, uh, the fish, why selling of the duck, why selling of the pig? So, in this integrated way, just you, uh, uh, the 
this the excreta of the pig is utilized in the pond and uh, this the uh, duck they are getting the water from the pond and they also what they excrete they are also being utilized for the fish production so in this integrated way the income of the farmers increased to many folds so we already discussed efficient converter pig why we raise the pigs because it is efficient converter of concentrate into meat and uh, quick and net return because in within 8 to 10 months it is uh, the body weight comes to approx 70 to 80 kg and uh, in that weight uh, it is the marketable age and we can sold it out rapid expansion of enterprise than the cattle and sheep because of their high reproductive efficiency and relatively less investment on equipment and set investment is very less they are very much uh, resistant to the change in the uh, this uh, climatic conditions also and more prolific high fat storing capacity uh, efficient converter of many by products so, and feed into the pork and feed conversion is uh, also uh, very good efficiency 1 is to 3 and pig requires less roughages hence a small acreage of pasture for growing and fattening pigs actually it is a monogastic animal so roughage requirement is very very less and uh, another advantage is the requirement of labor is less fluctuation of price of market hog is less suppose in the case of the poultry just to think how the uh, price is fluctuating suppose this month is the price is 110 rupees next month when the uh, lot of productions are coming then the price become 100 so in the poultry uh, in, in the farmers sometimes uh, they are in loss but in the piggery fluctuation of price is very very less hogs have high dressing percentage this is the maximum in poultry, approx 60% dressing percentage are there. In, if you talk about the goat tree, 50 to 55% dressing per percentage are there. But in the pig, 80% dressing percentage are coming, means wastage is very, very less, and their farmers are getting more income. And non recurring expenses are also less. Pig are very well utilized, the byproduct like chin waste also. Pig skins are used for the goods like leather goods and the more meat can be produced from the pigs per unit of time and cost. Pork has higher energy due to higher fat content and slightly lower water content. Higher fat content is also required by the farmers, especially the laborers. They require more energy, more fat. Uh, so that's why their pig uh, is uh, liking by the, uh, the farmers and by the uh, villagers. You just see here the Jharsu pig. Jharsu pig we already discussed. The Jharsu pig is a crossbreed of Tambar and Desi. And this is the very good variety for different agroclimatic conditions of the Jharkhand as well as the other states because their performance is also very, very good uh, in the northeastern areas, in the UPs, in the, uh, in the, uh, their, uh, uh, Chhattisgarh. So everywhere the performance is good and uh, uh, farmers are adopting this pig very well. Uh, there are some peculiar characteristics in few lines we, we can tell. The peculiar characteristics of Jharsuk is the color, which is the black because the liking. We have we developed the black color pig because the liking of pig in especially in the our Jharkhand in the travel areas, the black color is the liking. So we developed, we select the, for the black colors and uh, skin is lustrous, very high growth performances. If we compare with the indigenous, we compared with the desi. Uh, in the same management practices, the, this Jharsuk pig become 90 to 100 kg in the same time period and desi 30 to 40 kg only. And better reproductive performance, uh, better feed conversion efficiency, better disease resistance, better adaptability adaptability in the village condition the new breed perform better than the half breed of desi or other cross breeds better adaptability economic returns just to see if we uh, consider the economics because of the better feed conversion efficiency 
their economic return is five to six times more remunerative than the desi pigs. Just you imagine ki uh, a farmers rearing the desi pigs, if they replace the desi pig with our jharsut improved variety, their in income is suddenly their income will increase to three to four times because of the higher body weight gain and because of the uh, reproductive performance, more number of piglets will come. So their economics, if we calculate three to four times beneficial than the our uh, indigenous pig. Just you see, this is the Jharsuk, uh, Jharsuk pig. So many piglets are there. This is the Jharsuk male and female pigs. And this is very popular, very popular in different uh, areas. And performance is very, very, their body weight uh, goes up to 200, 230, 250 kg also. And another advantage of the, this piggery is the farmers uh, can sell it at any time, at any stage of growth. Whether the uh, boar unable to matting, you can sell it for meat purpose, whether the uh, females unable to produce, you can sell it. So this is the, just like a ATM we could make all. Whenever farmer required money, at that time they can sell it very easily and their demand is also very, very good, very, very high. And their demand is also increasing day by day in different uh, areas. Just a minute. Hello? Hello? Class man. Ha, let me know. I am going to tell you about it. So feeding, we will talk a little bit about the feeding because the feeding is the feed is the major component of the piggery and uh, the total cost of piggery. Uh, the feeding in feeding approx 70 percent of the total cost of the production comes under the feeding so feed is the very important and we are talking about the integration integration for what integration for what integration for the feed integration for the feed so that if we integrate the piggery with the other enterprise with the crop production then we can reduce the feed cost if we keep the peak completely on the concentrate, the feed cost will be higher and the profit margin will be less. But if we integrate the piggery with the other component, in that situation, the feed cost of the pig farming will be less. And if the feed cost will be less, then the economics, then the profit will be more. So, that's why we are integrating just to see there are different types of pigs are there and feeding of swine swine we already discussed pig is a monogastic animal so they do not require more amount of the roughages even in adult pigs we can provide we can replace the concentrate 30 percent we can replace 30% concentrate by the provision of the green grasses. Whereas in growers, approx 10% concentrate cost will be replaced by the greeneries. Just you see here, here there are different types of the just grain like maize, wheat. Suppose the maize, suppose the maize, farmers are producing maize. They are selling the maize. They are selling the maize in the market in the season of only 10 or 11 or 12 rupees per kg. If that farmer utilize that maize for the feeding of pigs for one year and if the farmers are selling that pigs, then the price of that maize will go to 30 rupees. The farmers are selling the maize corn by the 12 rupees per kg. But if they do not 
if they do not sell it and they produce they utilize that maize for the feeding to the pigs and they sell that pigs by the, after 10 months then if they calculate the economics if you calculate the price then the price of that maize will goes to the 30 rupees per kg means if a farmer is growing the maize, if a farmer is growing the different grains and if they utilize for the feeding of the pigs and if after one year or ten months if they are selling the pigs then their profit will go to three times, 2.5 to three times. Just to imagine how it is beneficial for the farmers, just to imagine how if we integrate the crop production with the livestock how they are getting the income previously they were getting only 12 rupees per kg but within 10 months if they do not sell it to the uh, middleman if they utilize this produce for the feeding of pigs they can get the income of 30 rupees per kg so why integrating if by integrating the crop with the livestock then their the produce the cost of the product will be two times three times higher so in this way we can by integrating we can improve the economic uh, status of the farmers we can improve the socioeconomic status of the farmers so this is the feeding of the young ones young ones the, uh, just for the information, I want to tell you that uh, these piglets start feeding after 14 days of their is. Before 14 days, they are only maintained on the milk feeding, colostrum feeding. After 14 days of is, they start consumption of the concentrate. So, just to see both methods, grazing, stall feeding, and this is the both grazing also, stall feeding also. So, grazing, stall feeding and whatever it is, they are all, all are this integrating. Whether it is the grazing, whether we are providing the green grasses, whether it is the providing the green forest, whether it is the providing the concentrates, all these things are comes from the crop. So, why integrating? the crop with the livestock we can maintain we can't keep the livestock without the crop and if we integrate the production performance and production cost of the crop is also we can reduce by applying the manures of the livestock these are the just you see different types of feeds we are applied for different types of livestock maize is approximately 60 percent uh, for all types of livestock in feed for all types of li livestock maize is the concentration of maize is approximately 55 to 60 percent along with this the cakes is the byproduct of the wild cakes different types of wild like uh, uh, this uh, uh, sarso uh, uh, like pc like this uh, brown nut so these are the cakes dried fish wheat bran all are the byproducts of the Crop. This is the ration we are producing for different categories of pigs for the utilization. Maize, you just see, maize is the main component. While if we can, if we add this maize, wild cakes, and uh, wheat bran, it is nine, more than ninety percent. More than ninety percent of the feed comes from the crops. More than ninety percent. So, if the farmer is having the production of these type of things, then the production performance of the livestock will improve and their uh, this uh, economic status will also improve and the production cost will be less. Just you see, feed cost in the pig energy, protein, minerals, vitamins are required and you see uh, energy feeds are corn, barley, Milo, black wheat, wheat, oat, rice, kale, potatoes, bakery based. These are the things we are utilizing uh, as an energy feed. Corn is the mainly 
major component of the feed and the basic energy feed is the corn high in fiber and also digestible carbohydrates are there corn by products we are also utilizing for the feeding to the pigs we can utilize corn by product so you just see gluten corn gluten corn germ meal there will be potatoes sometimes potatoes if uh, uh, the farmers are unable to sell if, if potatoes are having some problems then uh, we can utilize this also for the feeding to the livestock the pigs bakery by products uh, what the by products of bakery are coming we can also pro provide it for feeding to the pigs molasses by products and by products of tubercle plant by products of super cane plant that's called meli that is very important component when we, we can utilize for the feeding to the pigs for faster growth so industry by product we can also uh, this integrate the industries with the production of the livestock for the reducing the feed cost of the livestock plant proteins are there soybean we we may also utilize soybean as such we may utilize soybean wild meal we may utilize these are very good protein source for the livestock for the pigs for the cattle for the poultry soybean wild meal it is it contains 44 to 49 percent protein Similarly, cotton seed meal, cotton seed meal in Rajasthan. Just to see, you, you will observe that the, they are utilizing the cotton seed meal in, in a very uh, for the feeding to the uh, these cattle. And it's also very good source of protein for the livestock. Similarly, linseed meal, whole soybean, so animal protein also meat scraps, meat bone meal, and fish meal. Fish meal is very very important. For the feeding to the feed of the pigs, because for getting the essential amino acids, we have to introduce the uh, this uh, livestock source of protein also for the uh, pigs, especially. So we are utilizing this fish meal uh, for the uh, faster growth in case of the pig. Raffages, as you see, raffages is also very very important. Raffages and we can also prepare the silage especially for the goat for the uh, cattle we are also prepare the silage is a very good uh, source of the nutrient for the uh, livestock we may also utilize the silage for the pigs also pasture we are talking about the organic farming we are talking about the low cost uh, animal production so we have to think about the pasture also because the in organic farming pasture is very very important uh, in case of organic farming also we have to uh, we have to keep our livestock in a uh, in a free manner way in a traditional way so pasture feeding by this pasture feeding we can uh, reduce the uh, cost of the feed and the performance the growth the meat quality is also become very very good we are we were uh, talking about the disease of the pig so for the disease there are only two important disease of pigs are there because uh, pigs are very resistant to various diseases but these two diseases is very very important and we have to vaccinate before rearing the pigs whether it is pigry is uh, doing in a isolated way or in a integrated way vaccination is very very important first vaccine is being provided at the age of 2 months swine fever and then every years we have to vaccinate the pigs to avoid this swine fever disease symptoms are there a sudden death and very high fevers are there this is the symptom similarly fmd disease fmd is a very common it is uh, being occurred in the cattle in case of the goat in case of sheep in case of pig also so in this disease the off feeding situation is there reproductive failure is there piglet mortality is there fever is there and uh, lesions in hoof and mouth uh, is being observed so fmd uh, jo disease hai fmd disease is also we are vaccinating the every 6 months we are vaccinating against this disease every 6 month to the pigs so now we are talking about the pigry in in integrated way crop with pigry the production of crop pork uh, we can integrate the crop with pigry for the production of pork feed with non edible feed or forage 
and subsidiary activity, more income, big manure or biogas is manufactured. Big manure is also utilized for the biogas production. And if we just, we already discussed that if we integrate the crop, what the, the, what the farmers produce and we do not sell it to the middleman, but if we utilize for the feeding to the pigs, then you just see that the same crops, the same produce, the income will be in a triple, income will be triple by the utilization of same produce. Suppose a farmers buy the crop production, they are selling their produce in 50,000 and they do not sell it and they utilize for feeding to the pigs and after 10 months they sell the pigs, then that 50,000 will be 1 lakh 50,000. Minimum three times beneficial. So in this way, by integrating with the crop and with the livestock, we may reduce the production cost and then the, the profitability will also be very, very high. Just this you see in the photographs, integrated pig fish farming. In this type of the animal fish farming, the and the addition of pig manure into fish pond increases fish production through direct consumption of manure by fish and increase in natural fish food via the release of nutrients from manure decomposition. So, in this way, the fish is getting nutrients through the manure of pig and the pig if we integrate it with, with the pond then there is no problem of the storage of the wastes. In Pigri there is a, also a problem of the storage of wastes because means uh, this uh, the manure, utilization of manure is also a problem. So if we directly utilize in the pond then that is used as a feed of the fish growth of the fish will improve and also the management will be easier. So integration of piggery with fish farming, the advantages are the pig dung will act as excellent pond fertilizer. No supplementary food is required for the fish production and pond dislike provide a space for erection of animal housing unit, no extra space is being required and pig manure is known to about 70 percent digestible food for fish as well as suitable for integrated fish farming. Fresh pig manure seems to lead to faster fish growth than fermented. So freshly what the fresh manure is coming we can utilize it immediately to the pond for the better growth of the fish. And the quality of fresh pig manure depends on the type of feed, the pig takes and degree of digestion. So these are the things and the fresh pig manure has an organic matter content of about 18 percent, nitrogen 0.8 percent, phosphorus. So these are the things we may utilize it as a manure also. Just to see by the on the bund of the pond we may construct the pond or on the also on the uh, above the pond in the middle of pond we may construct the pigri uh, pig style so that directly the fresh manure comes to the pond for faster growth so on three pigs it is three pigs can be raised on a pond of 0.1 hectares means approx 1000 meters area of a pond we can utilize three pigs efficiently for the production of the fish properly similarly crop aquaculture farming system this is the mainly most prevalent in japan china indonesia india also thailand and philippines so why this uh, crop aquaculture uh, the farming systems uh, means fisheries is also especially in the rice field, we can provide the fish with planktonic, periphytic and wetnic food and uh, we can just you see the photographs here also, uh, this is the, the pond is there, and here just to see crop aquaculture farming system, in lowland rice, the entire food chain and vast amount of fertilizers 
fertilized water can be fully utilized by integrating rice and fish. The rice waste farming involving fish will not only reserve the present trend of the non utilizing and under utilization of rice field but also make rice farming more attractive. Consequent of such a farming system, it can sustain food security. So this is also a very effective way we can utilize it and this is the crop the farming system. Similarly, livestock farming system, there are so many models are there. Just to see livestock plus crop, predominating, predominant farming system is also a, traditionally it is being uh, uh, just uh, traditionally it is being uh, happens it, uh, where it lies uh, traditionally and crop and livestock component one another uh, through mutual benefit also and uh, animals play important role in enriching the soil and the draft power also the, in the for the plowing area for the plowing of the field we are utilizing the animals so in this way livestock and crop is not a new thing it is both are interdependent and we can integrate very easily just to see livestock and crop uh, integration cow dung helps in overall sustainability of the farming system dung contain micro and micronutrients and cow dung is for production of biogas also biogas is source of renewable energy and part ton manure contain 8 kg nitrogen 4 kg phosphorus and 16 kg potassium also and application of manure improves the soil fertility and integrated farming system with six buffaloes generate 904 man days of employment and 400 man days in, in crops alone just you see if we introduce the livestock then the employment generation is also increases 904 man days as against 400 man days by the crops only so livestock crop and fish we can also uh, uh, utilize we already discussed the livestock crop and fish suppose pig crop and fish fish is there the manure of pig comes to the fish pond and this pond water we can utilize for the irrigation in the crop area and what to be uh, the wash out water of the farm comes to the pond so water level will be maintained the plot for plowing there is no problem and fish are getting the uh, regular the feed from the uh, this uh, manure of the pig so how so just to see the how are they integrated nothing is wasted nothing is wasted no any extra fertilizer and pesticides is required just you imagine that uh, uh, pond is there and uh, the the waste is coming to the pond and there is no problem water for irrigation because the farmers are uh, uh, very uh, afraid about the water especially in the rain fed areas so by integrating the farmers are getting they fulfill all the requirement and their income is also increasing in many folds here is just to see is the example crop livestock uh, integration just you see uh, the different components rice wheat and just you see the cost benefit ratio here also cow buffalo bullocks goat poultry ducks just you see cost to return ratio employment days also and now in this slide you just see if they integrate if they if a farmer integrate crop with two bullocks three cows their gross income increased from 47000 to 70000 if they integrate crop bullocks and buffaloes then their income increased to 83000 <clears throat> if they integrate two bullocks one cow two buffalo their income is also approximately 1000 if they introduce goats on low only if they introduce goats also along with the cow buffalo crops then income is 94000 if they integrate poultry and ducks also then the income increase to more than 1 lakhs so just you see how if we are integrating the different components to the IFS system then how the gross income and net income is increasing along with this employment days is also increasing 
so we can also avoid we can also reduce the problem of unemployment to the farmers we can also uh, increase the income of the farmers so similarly poultry fish farming system we can also recommend rice fish duck integration we can also integrate duck plus rice plus fish we may also integrate it just to see ample feeding material for dog economic gain is 2.6 times than the return of rice alone if a farmers growing rice only and if a farmers integrate fish and duck then their growth is 2.6 times than the rice alone similarly rice crop backyard poultry just to see there also um, the increase the income in many folds integrated poultry farming is also there just to see integrated poultry farming along with the crops along with the fish crop uh, the five to six laying 100 words steady income provide uh, nutrients food to the family also so if they are having the livestock so they are getting the income they are increasing the income as well as the nutritional security we are talking about the nutritional security we can also solve the problems of nutri nutritional security of the farmers some a small ruminants crop horticulture based farming system we can also recommend a small ruminant silvi pastoral just to see silvi pastoral in, with the forestry we can also integrate with the goat with the cattle also for the more income to the farmers just to see this is the nutrient uh, recycling efficient nutrient recycling how the nutrient recycled in different ways different components are there and one wastage of one component utilized by other and nutrients of one component utilized by the other component similarly this is the uh, input output flow diagram just to see the this uh, PC culture, duckery unit, how they are integrated just in the babe, just like a babe. If we integrate different components, it's the babe formation is there. Each and every, the wide product and produce of each and every component by utilized by the other components. In an effective way, nothing is wasted and the income ultimately, income of the farmers is increasing. Crop livestock fish already discussed. Just to see in the, this slide integrating, if we integrate the fish, pig fish farming, just is a case study of uh, in fall just to see uh, it, the income is increases in many folds return from pig farming just to see 6 lakhs is 2000 return from fish farming 2 lakh 64000 and uh, uh, they are maintaining uh, the pigry in 0 0.01 hectare fish in 3 hectare so fish and pig the income will be more similarly duck just to duck, duck production is also very duck is better than the poultry we i consider that duck is better than the poultry because the duck the egg production is much more than the poultry second duck is very very resistant to various diseases and duck we can rear the duck under by the in the backyard condition they uh, they consume the feed in a backyard way and the profit margin is more as compared to the poultry. So duck is becoming very, very popular with the farmers. So duck uh, is a problem There is constant is water body is required for duck farming. But it also being solved that the polythene duck rearing in a polythene pond. You may just spread a polythene, fill the water and you can rear the duck in that pond and they just fulfill the requirement of water to this point. So net profit, if we talk about the profit, net profit is approx 16,000 per unit in a year. So this is the huge income for the farmers in a, as a side business, 16,000. If a flock of 25 to 30 ducks are there, then 16,000 they are getting the income. In a, just in a small area, in a small part of the land, by utilizing the small part of land, they are getting this huge income. So uh, we can integrate the duck with the pig also. This is the innovation we already uh, published in the Hindu paper, rearing of duck in polythene pond proves rewarding. These are the photographs of tribal women in different parts of the India. They are utilizing this, rearing the ducks by this uh, polythene pond. 
and this is the economics of backyard duckery just you see 19000 they are getting by rearing just 20 25 ducks that we may integrate this duck with the pig also integrating duck farming just you see integrated farming in lowland area low cost housing uh, integrated farming system duck fish rice farming system is there integrated farming just you see upland in upland area also now 30 number of duck we can keep and we can utilize this fish duck rearing under ifs just to see different types of component and uh, integrated goat farming is also there as we talk about the livestock we can't forget the goat and goat is very much suitable in the silvic pastoral area in the forest area in the uh, horticulture area we can rear the goats easily for getting the income just to see apiculture rabbit farming is the another component fish farming and just integrated sericulture also mushroom cultivation we may utilize uh, we may grow the mushroom also biogas biogas is very very good renewable source of energy and why the utilization of the manure of the pig why the utilization of manure of the cow we can produce the biogas and uh, this biogas can be utilized for the electricity purpose can be utilized for the cooking purpose and the after preparation of biogas what the slurry comes that is become a very good fertilizer for the field we may utilize that for the fertilizer for the field so uh, so we can integrate in this way also for biogas generation also just to see uh, these are the some uh, success stories of this integrated farming system and there are some integrated farming system for di different agro climatic zones of india if the high altitude cold desert area is there then pasture forestry goat rabbit is required arid and desert areas then in livestock camel sheep goat is we can utilize it in western and central himalayan areas we can a uh, here the uh, maize rice pulses and horticulture crops are being recommended and just to see eastern himalayan region piggery and poultry along with the crops it is recommended indo gangetic plains dairy buffaloes is being recommended central and southern highland areas dairy cattle sheep goat poultry is recommended in western ghat Cattle, sheep, goat is recommended in delta and coastal plains. Poultry and piggery is recommended. And so this is the farming system. Livelihoods. This is the success story uh, for livelihood security in a small and marginal farmers in disadvantaged villages of the Tamil Nadu. Some villages, disadvantaged villages of the Tamil Nadu are there. And then, if technical intervention proposed then the impact comes as the increase income of the farmers so rice monoculture if the rice monoculture situation integrated rice fish poultry farming is recommended and productivity is enhanced increased adoption of integrated farming system and higher rice yield rice yield increases as well as the income from the livestock is also comes to the farmers similarly landless agricultural laborers mushroom production vermicomposting is recommended and in coastal areas aqua farming with seaweeds resource conservation and increased adoption of seaweeds culture so these are the some success stories some interventions that were tried with the farmers and it becomes successful to the farmers for increasing the livestock so we may conclude that integrated farming system seems to be the answer to the problem of increasing food production for increasing income and for improving nutrition of the small scale farmers with limited resource without any adverse effect on environment and agro system and more emphasis is still required to generate a generalized model suited to various farm size holding in different agro climatic conditions so thank you all thank you very much to all participants, if any queries, please. So, most welcome.
Any queries? Yeah. Yes, any queries, please, participants? We can ask via chat or uh, we can directly put it in, uh, turn on your microphone and ask. Let me turn the microphone on for everyone. Please, we can ask the questions now. Yeah. You can ask the questions and turn on your microphones. If you have any queries, then most welcome. Otherwise, I will sort it down. Uh, are there any questions? No, any questions. Mostly, no. thank you for coming in. OK, uh, thank you. Thank uh, one, you. One question is there, sir. I think. Yeah, yeah, please. How many uh, large ruminant animals can uh, be reared in one point to act their dairy based IFS? In chat itself. How many? You can see it in chat itself, sir. Uh, how yeah. many large animal, uh, large ruminant animals can uh, be reared in 1.0 hectare uh, dairy based? Uh, yeah, 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 of course, of course. In one, one point, another question is there, what is the standard unit of livestock in IFS for 1.0 hectare land area? One hectare, in one hectare, we can rear 8 to 10 cows uh, uh, in one hectare land. 8 to 10 cows is suitable for uh, keeping the uh, cattle and this, uh, the, uh, in a, for, for crop production. Na? If we integrate the crop with the dairy cow, 8 to 10 cows is recommended. Yeah, one... Uh, uh, it, I think it, this is the same thing. What is the standard unit of life? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Any other question? If we have, please ask now. Uh, I think we are uh, way over our, our time. Okay, sir. Thank there you. are no questions. Uh, we can. Yeah, mostly thank yous are coming in, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, one more question came from Rahul Arya, I guess. Uh, how much is the genetic inheritance of different breeds in Jarsuk breeds, sir? Yeah, in Jarsuk, Rahul, Dr. Rahul, in Jarsuk, the uh, genetic inheritance is 50% uh, exotic, and that is Tambar, mm -hmm. and 50% is the our indigenous livestock, the indigenous pig. Yes, sir. Yeah, exactly. so it is known as uh, TND. TND and Jarsuk are same. Yeah, actually, TND is further refined and renamed as Jar Jarsuk. Okay. Yeah. Any other question, please ask. Sir, thank you, sir. For thank you. Okay. On okay. behalf of thank the participants and organizing committee, uh, we express our gratitude for you uh, being with us. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you, sir. Rahul. Please subscribe you, to the channel so that you will get notifications of the video. I have already shared the link of the channel so that you could subscribe and you will get notification for every new upload. Thank you. Thank you, sir.